Well now, here's part three of how to create a fun retro comic master using fantastic original comics from archive.org and in this, sec in this section we're going to be looking at bubbles speech bubbles, you've seen them all in comics, much fun bubbles, bubbles, bubbles for this to be a truly, really, really great comic template we also need to put in the bubbles for each page. If you're coming to this video without watching part 1 and part 2, you might need to do that. They're in the Practical Affinity Publisher playlist if you'd like to look for them. So there are a number of ways to do this. Let's look at the options. You can trace existing bubbles, which is one of the methods I use adding bubbles from suppliers like Frankentoon for instance or any of the good comic graphic sites. Notice that I have baseline grids turned on as well. This is important for when you need to add your text and we'll look at that a little later on because it really is quite important. Now option one, tracing existing bubbles. You may be a little nervous about this but really it's quite easy. With our comic pages displayed, select the designer persona and you can see that up the top next to the publisher icon. You've got the little blue designer icon. Now with the designer persona enabled, you can see that there's a slight difference to what the screen looks like of course. It's now to all intents and purposes operating in Affinity Designer and you don't have the list of pages and master pages at the side but you do have the main comic page and that's the one we want so we can go on tracing the existing bubbles now we're in designer so you select the pen tool you can see it highlighted there on the left now go up and set the stroke to two points and the color of the fill to blank no fill just yet you can see it's blank, we've got a, you can set it there with the red line through it, that means there's no fill. We don't want the balloon to be filling up as you go around each point. Now, tracing the first bubble. This is a slow process, so don't rush it. It gets easier as you go along. Remember that this is a work of art. Set your first point to begin and then set each following point a short distance along the line edge of the existing bubble. And you can see what I've got there. I've got all the points drawn. and one across the top is easy of course. You just put the left hand point in where I'm starting, go across to the right and the line will join up. You'll see the node points appear as you go. You can set smoothing on and so on to suit your design. Now the smoothing option is up the top and you'll see that in a moment. What the smoothing option does is round out the curves, so you remove all the jaggies. So now that you've set your outline initially, let's fix it and smooth it out. Select the move tool for now, and that hides the node points. Everything on the screen disappears when you select the move tool. None of the node points will show. Go over and hide the underlying image. You don't want the image showing through because it's too much of a distraction and your rather dodgy balloon is revealed <laughs> and, and doesn't that look dodgy okay now we're going to fix it and fill it zoom in on the image to make it easier to see that's the command and the plus key that's not command plus something i've forgotten that's command and the plus key and that will zoom in command and the minus key will zoom out so now that you've zoomed in a little bit go and select the node tool and you can see it highlighted there on the left go around your balloon and smooth out the lines if you select each little node you can move the line in and out a little bit now if you still have snapping turned on you can hold your finger on the alt key that's the one down the bottom with it looks like a little mouse trap on it two lines it's the alt key next to the command key usually and in between that and the control key so if you hold your finger on that it won't snap to the edges you can actually freely move those little nodes about 
Of course you can turn snapping off altogether, but we won't bother with that at the moment. Now you've been around and smoothed out your lines. You can also select all the points and then click on the smooth option which you'll find in the top toolbar. It's sort of a, a roundy upside down letter U shape with a line across the top of it. Highlight all your points and click that and it will smooth out a lot of those lines. So we now have an, a smooth bubble and it's an odd shape on the left there and the right because it's folding around another balloon just there. So now you can switch back to the publisher persona. And you can continue to smooth the lines in publisher the same way if you wish because that option is also available in publisher. Select the node tool and then select fill and fill with your desired color. Now you have to have all of those nodes closed. If you've got a gap you'll end up filling your entire document. Just click on um, undo or um, command Z or command Z if you're American and it will undo what you've just done. And make sure all your nodes are closed. If you start at the top left hand corner like I did that's where you finished. The last thing you touch is that same node point and that will close the nodes up close the line, you'll have no gaps. I made this one green so you can see it clearly but I'll go back and change it to white in a moment and as I've noted there your bubble must be a closed bubble no gaps in the outline. With the bubble white again now turn on your underlying image again so you can check the position and layer. You can see I've got over there that the image is turned on and there's your layer, there's your bubble. You can see it's um, nicely fitting around the bubble text that's already there. And there's one on the right hand side I've done previously that you can also see. Now they may be a little odd because you've got characters in different places, but because they're nodes, you can actually, or curves if you like, the technical um, description of them, you can actually change the shape of those bubbles. So if you've got a character who's in a slightly different position to where you want your bubble to be, you can just change your bubble slightly to fit. Pretty cool. Now it's time to look at the section, second option for placing bubbles. Speech bubble packs are widely available on the internet. Frankenturn as I mentioned and many many other places like comic specific websites have such bubbles available. If you go on to Google and type in search comic speech bubbles, it'll come back with probably thousands of places where they're available. Some are free, some are rubbish, some are commercial and rubbish, and some are really good. So how do we use them? So locate your bubbles first. Heck, I'll even give you a small pack of very usable bubbles that I have here. Have a look on my website and you'll find them and download them. I think there's mm, 17 of them all together. Very handy. You can even create your own packs by tracing existing bubbles from comics and saving them. Just what we were doing before, a moment ago. Save those bubbles and they're there permanently. Notice I have the previously traced bubbles turned off and only the imaged placed bubble on. You can see that one there. Have a look on the layers over there. I've got the one we just created and a few others. They're all turned off, so they're not getting in the way. And you can enlarge or shrink them as needed. Great for kids' books. That bubble that I'm pointing to there is a placed bubble from that bubble pack that's on my website. Now you can move it around, enlarge it. Um, I don't believe you can change its shape unless you convert it to a curve and then you may well be able to do anything you like with it. I haven't gone there because I didn't think there was any point in getting too technical with bubbles. You can spend a lot of time messing around with bubbles. So select a suitable transparent background bubble. Place it where you want it. You can see what I've done. Scale it the size. Now I still have the baseline grid turned on so I remember it because I want to talk about that in a moment. Comic text needs baseline grid to line up text. 
So the text right across your comic page, it doesn't matter which bubble it in is in, lines up with the text in the frame next to it, for example. If you've got a panel on the left and a panel on the right, it's really good practice, industry practice really, to have the text right across that page all in a neat straight line. Now let's begin with the text. I haven't modified this baseline from the defaults. You can change the width of those baselines, the gap between the lines, or if you like, the leading or the line spacing um, as it's been called, mostly by word users, <laughs> but there you go. Okay, let's look at, at how it works. All in a line is the word. Put your text on the baseline grid. You can see I've got some there. No way am I going. And it's just about on the blue line, certainly in between it. And in the right hand panel I've got, oh yes you are. But it's exactly lined up because it's on the baseline with the panel on the left. So both bubbles have the text lining up across the page. This is a trick of the trade and makes the comic much more readable than having random text plopping down anywhere. Comic or not, it still has to have good design. See, there it is. Even this old comic, produced in the 50s, has the text across a baseline. If you look closely at that, in the panel we've been working in, just above our No Way Am I Going, it says, Our, don't you ever relax. And across the other side, listen to expect it, don't do that. Now, because it's kind of a little bit out of um, line with, with um, those blue lines, that's all right. You can see that it is still in line. If I were to move that comic panel up or down slightly, it would lie, those, that text would line up with those little blue lines. Follow the lines in blue and you'll see that even here the text is in line across the page in all bubbles. Really good standard practice. Okay, well that's it for this. Um, I'm sure tracing all those bubbles so that you can put your own text in them will keep you occupied at least until this time next week. <laughs> That's it for part three, folks. Please remember to subscribe. Spread the love. Thanks for watching this fun little exercise.